Thank you so much for the governor being here for a great day for South Carolina Republican Party. At this time, the governor, Nikki Haley. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, I want to, first of all, thank you for being here, but this is the start of spreading a very big message. Over the next two weeks, we need to remind people that we don't elect people because they look good in a picture or they hold a baby well. We don't elect people because they're nice in the grocery store and we've known them for years. We have to understand that we elect people who fight for the right reasons. Senator Setzler is someone that I have known for a long time, and he has a great family, but he has been in Columbia for 35 years. And it has gone from where he is watching out for the people to where we are seeing him watch out for himself. Mm -hmm. And I will give you some examples. For two years, we fought for a Department of Administration. Imagine a CEO that doesn't have any control over their human resources. Imagine a CEO that has no control over their IT services. Imagine a CEO that has no control over their buildings or their cars. That's me. So I went to the legislature and said, let's make it like every other state in the country where all the back office procedures go into one area underneath the governor and we can save money and we can actually let the agencies focus on their mission. And so through that process, the first year we asked the Senate to work on it. It passed straight through the House and the Senate waited and waited and waited. And they debated it and they talked about it, but they wouldn't pass it. On the last day of session, I said, you are not to leave until you finish the work for the people of this state. They sued me, they won, and they were able to go home. So we had to put it off all summer. They came back the next year with the promise of getting it done. We got it through the House, we got it through the Senate, we actually got conference committee reports where three members of the House and three members of the Senate came together, and we waited. And April came and went, and May came and went. And when we finally got to the last day of session, all we needed was a vote to sit Senator Knotts down because Senator Knotts was fighting it. And if we got the vote to sit Senator Knotts down, we could get a vote on the record for the people on whether they were for Department of Administration or not. And I knew if we got the vote, we would win. It would have been the biggest restructuring effort South Carolina has seen in 25 years. We needed one person. I called Senator Setzler and I said, I need you on this. This is the biggest effort we have ever seen. This will help the people of Lexington County. This will help the people of South Carolina and you will make history. And he said, I'm sorry, I have to be with my group. Mm -hmm. His group are the Democrats. Mm -hmm. And that one vote, he is the one vote that kept us from sitting Senator Knotts down. He is the one reason we wasted two years of taxpayer time and money. And he is the one reason we do not have a Department of Administration right now. Hmm. Another example was we had um, a tax relief bill where I had proposed that we would have, um, I want to get my numbers right, $80 million we would create in a tax relief trust fund that would go back to the businesses, the small businesses of our state, that would go back to the individuals of our state. He voted against it. And instead, he voted to give money to an Irmo Veterans Park. He voted to give money to a pilot project at Habitat for Humanity. He voted to give $4 million to the Arts Commission. He voted to, these got really ridiculous because I was um, looking, he voted to give 200000 to a festival in Charleston. Um, he voted to give 200000 to a park at Mitch Mitchellville in Hilton Head, but he would not vote to give the taxpayers and the small businesses of the state tax relief. That's the problem. It's not about how nice he is. It is about the fact that he has forgotten that he works for the people. He has forgotten that the small businesses need him. And to top all of that off, this is a man who goes and having been in service 35 years, is taking money to stay in a hotel when he lives 10 miles away from his home. He mm -hmm. is taking per diem. He is taking retirement rather than salary and is not double dipping, triple dipping from the, state, the taxpayers of this state. Mm -hmm. He has been in Columbia too long. He has become one of them. He is the reason I think we need term limits, and he is the reason that I think we need Dee Dee Vauders for the next senator. Of <laughs> we have a chance to really make a difference in the Senate seat, and I want to tell you a story. There was this unknown girl that decided she wanted to run for the House seat, and it was a, 
incumbent that had been there 30 years. He was the longest serving House legislator in Lexington County. And she went and she knocked on doors, like Dee Dee did. She went and sat in offices of good people like Ted McGee and said, if you will give me a chance, I will make you proud. The people of Lexington County gave me a chance and I have not stopped trying to make them proud. It took a lot of courage for the people to let go of someone that they respected, that, they, that had been there 30 years, to say, we deserve better. This is a time where we need to get out we need to let the people know we don't need 35-year incumbents. We need people with fresh voices, fresh ideas, and strong spines. Because now more than ever, business matters. Small businesses need us. People need jobs. They don't need to sit there and talk about what they're going to get at the state house, what benefits they're going to get, and they don't need to quietly give pork projects in order to stay in good with the Democrats, which is what Senator Setzler is. So I would ask you all to get out and let's go fight. This is a tough fight, but it's one that can win, because if this girl could win that House race, this woman will definitely win the Senate race. So thank you for that, and with that, I will turn it over to someone I'm going to work very hard for, the next Senator for Senate District 26, Dee Dee Waters. Yes. I want to thank everyone for coming. It is a packed room. Those of you who are watching this on television can't see, but it overwhelms me and it brings tears to my eyes because most of these folks I met out knocking on doors. I declared last November 3rd that I was going to run for Senate District 26 after finding out that I had been gerrymandered into Nikki Setzler Senate District, a district that most call the running dog district, if you look at it on a map. It's bits and pieces of four counties that has been designed to protect Mr. Setzler for the 35 years he's been in Senate. I knew then that I couldn't sit by and let him be my senator without one heck of a fight. I felt like I deserved better. I feel like you deserve better. You've heard what the governor had to say, and I am absolutely overwhelmed by her trust and support. I admire her so much and I am so thankful that today she was willing to put herself and her reputation on the line for me and for the people of Senate District 26. But what she said about Mr. Setzler is true. You can go, you can find out for yourself. But guys, we deserve, we deserve so much better than what we've been getting. Mr. Setzler is a nice guy. He's got a nice family, but nice doesn't cut it. And after a while, it's not so nice when you use my tax dollars for your own personal gain. So if you're fired up and fed up like I am, then join me. I've knocked on over 9,000 doors. I'll keep going till the polls close on election day. I am that dedicated and that committed to representing you. And I promise you, and we'll hope it gets out of committee, but if not, we're going to push for roll call votes in committee. I promise you that I will work to make sure that no part-time legislator continues to receive hotel benefits if they live less than 55 miles from the state house and retirement benefits on your back and my back. It's not right. Mm -hmm. So I look forward to your support. You may call me, visit my website, ddforsenate.com, www.ddforsenate.com. I took three phone calls today asking for sign requests. People have my personal cell phone number. I encourage you to use it. I believe serving means being accessible, and I promise you will always be able to access me. Access me. So thank you, but thank you guys for being here. Those of you who've traveled, some from Aiken County, some from Calhoun County, some from right here in Lexington County to be here today and support me. And thank you, thank you, Governor Haley, for your trust and support and your endorsement today. I will make each and every one of you, including the governor, proud that you decided to get behind me. Thank you. Yes. Any questions yeah. from any of our fellows with the cameras? I got a little tape beforehand, I think. So, uh, but I know a couple of other folks have come in. Pat, you're good. What about uh, as part of administration? Uh, was that you talked about that a lot as being a key uh, point uh, was last year and in, in, in the coming session? Where is the ethics reform weighing in on where you're going to be? The ethics reform package that um, governor. You said Department of Administration or ethics? Well, it was kind of both, two. right? Create those two in terms of priority. 
in terms of priorities, um, you know, I have been campaigning, I don't almost know how you separate the two because if you want strong ethics reform in our state, you've got to do away with the Budget and Control Board, which has blocked every type of meaningful reforms with regards to ethics and spending that we've had. So I think they're very much, they're simultaneous and for me they're both going to be priorities in the next session. I think we're going to have to do. Um, like I said, it's very hard to break out the two. I mean, I've got to tell you, they're, they're interlocking and dependent. You have to have ethics reform, but again, you've got to get rid of the Budget and Control Board if you want that ethics reform to be meaningful. And I'll so. tell you, the point of what we need is we need legislators that can think beyond one issue. Yeah. And that is what I love about Didi is you look at small business people, we balance all the time. You've right. got balls in the air all the time. It's not that you focus on this one and then move to this one and then move to this one. I mean, you're constantly moving all the time. We need Department of Administration. We need ethics. Senate needs to quit um, looking over their own senators for ethics issues. Senators right. need to quit double dipping. But we also have other things. We've got jobs. People in this state need jobs. We need to continue to make it a business friendly environment. We've got so many priorities that we need someone that is thinking about all those issues and not thinking about what his friends are saying in his party. Okay. Is there a, you talked about a number of things. Yes. Um, was there a, a, a line when you went, okay, that's it, I'm running? When you found out you were gerrymandered, when you found out double dipping, like, was there something where you just said, that's the final straw? That's I think the thing. most egregious thing I have seen, because, I mean, it's downright laughable, is he lives here at the base of the Dravet Street Bridge, right beside the New Orleans restaurant. Yeah, it's sort of the whole thing. Uh -huh. Yeah, he could walk to work and he takes the nightly hotel per diem of $131 a night. When I found out someone would do something that blatant, I figured if I pulled the string, what else would I find? So if you were looking for the proverbial straw, it wasn't enough. I'm a big fan of term limits. I mean, 35 years. If you haven't become part of the solution in that time, you're part of the problem. He wanted to be there for four more. I was trying to figure out what new he had to offer, but really the, the straw that broke the camel's back. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm self-term limiting at 12 years. I've said that in writing, so 12 years. Um, but uh, yeah, the, it, was the, it was the hotel per diem, coupled with a abysmal voting record. So He also has a big, big uh, problem with not showing up for controversial votes. In fact, the South Carolina Citizens for Life will not be endorsing him. They have a policy of endorsing incumbents because they feel that incumbents have to take it across the brow with difficult votes. They're not endorsing Mr. Setzler, not because he didn't vote the right way, but just like Governor Haley said, when it came time for a difficult vote, he was nowhere to be found and he's been nicknamed Duck Out Setzler. And so I think we're paying him to do a job, which is to sit down and vote. And um, in more than one instance, we find that he's not there. So, of course, some would say he doesn't have a bad voting record. I'd like to go back and see his absentee voting record or his time spent in the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all very much. Let's get to work. We've got a race to win. Yeah. Yeah.